What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to do proxy rotation in Python when sending requests which can be especially useful when doing large scale professional web scraping. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to talk about rotating proxies in this video and the basic idea is that we have multiple proxy servers that we use to connect to a certain resource, for example, for web scraping, for web crawling, or to just get some information to send some requests to the API or something like that. Now, if you do that too often, if you do web scraping on a large scale, the problem is that you're going to get banned sooner or later, your IP address is going to get blocked on certain websites, because they recognize that you're always sending the requests from the same IP address, and they might not have an interest. Um, in you web scraping their content. So one way to circumvent that one way to prevent that is to just use a proxy server so that you don't connect with your own IP address, but you use the IP address of a proxy server. So you first connect to the proxy server, the proxy server sends the request to the resource, the resource sends the response, then you get the response from the proxy server. And this works fine. But the problem is, if you just use one proxy server, you're going to have the same problem, you're going to get blocked but uh, the blocked IP is going to be the IP of the proxy server and not your IP. So what you can do to make this more professional is you can rotate proxies. So you can have multiple proxy servers and you can connect um, first with one proxy server, then send the next request with the second one and so on and so forth so that you use a different IP address for different requests and that you're not uh, sending all the requests from the same IP address. This is the idea of proxy rotation. This is what we're going to do in this video today. We're going to do it with, uh, with free proxy servers and we're going to do it easily so you can follow along. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to pay anything. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to get a list of proxy servers. And since we want this to be free, we need to go to Google and type free proxy server list or something. You can um, find your own list if you want to. The one that I'm going to use for this video today is the free dash proxy dash list dot net uh, server list, you don't have to buy anything, you can just go down here, you can see IP address port and you have also the country. And if you want to get this list, you can just click on this button here to get the raw version, you can just click into this field, control C to copy and then we can go into PyCharm and create a new file that we're going to call proxy list.txt. And here we're going to just paste all this I all these uh, proxy servers. Now, first of all, we need to remove the header up here. But second of all, a lot of those are not going to work. So some of them are not going to respond at all. Some of them are going to respond uh, with a with an error code. So for a lot of those, we're going to encounter problems, which is why we want to filter that list. And for this, we're going to write a separate script to see which of those free proxies actually work. So we're going to create a new script, we're going to call this uh, check proxies py. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use multiple threads in order to check these proxies if they work or not. So we're going to say import threading, import queue, and then we're also going to import requests, which is not a core Python module. So you might want to install it in a command line by typing pip install requests if you don't have it yet. Um, and then what we're going to do, it's going to be quite simple, we're going to create a queue object since we're going to work with multiple threats. Um, and we're going to say that we have a list of valid proxies, which is going to be empty in the beginning, then we're going to open up the file where we have all the proxies. So proxy list txt in reading mode sf, and we're going to say the proxies are going to be f read split on a line break. And then for every proxy that we find for every p in proxies, we're going to just say q dot put p. So we're going to put the proxy into q. And then we can dq from the q uh, in our multi threaded function, which is going to be called um, check proxies. And all we're going to do here is we're going to say that the q is a global object. So global q, and then while not q dot empty. So why we still have IP addresses in there or proxy servers in there, we're going to say that the proxy is going to be q dot get and then we're going to try to send a request uh, using that proxy. And we're going to say the response is going to be requests dot get. And we're going to send a request to um, HTTP IP info 
.io slash json. You can also choose a different website if you want to. This is the one that I use for testing. And here we're going to say now proxies equal, and then we're going to have an HTTP proxy, which is going to be the proxy. And we're also going to have an HTTPS proxy, which we're also going to just say now as the proxy. This is not uh, always the case. So some proxies are only for um, HTTP, some are only for HTTPS, but we're going to do it here now like that for the sake of simplicity. Um, and then we're going to say, except if we encounter ev any, um, if we encounter any problems, we're just going to continue. And um, otherwise, if we don't encounter any problems, and also if the response status code is equal to 200, which is basically just okay, so success. Uh, if that is the case, we're going to print this proxy server. So just like that. Um, and now we're going to run multiple threads. So 40 in range 10. We're going to say or actually we don't need to call this T we can just give it no name. We're going to say threading threat with the target function of check proxies. And we're going to start uh, 10 threads. So I can run this now. And you're going to see that this gives me a bunch of proxy servers from the list that are valid that seem to be working. Um, I'm going to pause this now we're not going to get all of them, but I can just copy these now. And I can create a new file, I can call this one valid underscore proxies txt. And I can just paste in here the results. And then we can go and do the actual proxy rotation. And for that, we're just going to import here requests. And we're going to say with open valid proxies in reading mode as f, we're going to say proxies is f dot read dot split backslash n. And now what we want to do is we want to say we want to have a couple of sites to scrape or to check or something. So we're going to say sites to check. And of course, if you do actual web scraping, actual web crawling, I have tutorials on those things also on my channel, you're going to have to adapt it to the task. In this case, I'm just going to send some simple requests because the focus is on the rotation itself. Um, but I'm going to use some some links here from this books to scrape website, which is just a simple uh, web scraping source, I'm going to remove the HTTPS and turn it into HTTP just so we make sure it works. Um, I'm going to copy this now. And I'm going to couple a bunch of those links. So I'm going to also go to fantasy, for example, I'm going to paste this here. And I'm going to also go to adult fiction, or maybe let's go to history to keep it safe. And yeah, those are the sources now. And what we do now is for each request, uh, request, we want to have a different proxy service. So we say counter equals zero. And then for site in sites to check, we're going to say try, we're going to print some information, we're going to say that we're using using the proxy and then we're going to have proxies counter. So this is going to be the proxy server that we use in this um, iteration, we're going to say the result is going to be requests dot get, we're going to send a request to the site with the proxies equal to HTTP proxy, not in quotation marks, HTTPS proxy, or actually, sorry, this was for the previous script, proxies, counter, proxies, counter. And then what we want to do is we want to print, for example, um, the status code. So rest dot status code. And we want to say if something doesn't work, we're going to just print failed. And then finally, no matter if we have an exception or not, we're going to increase the counter. Because if everything works, we should go for the next proxy. And if it doesn't work, we should also go for the next proxy. <clears throat> so that is actually the proxy rotation. Let's see if it works. You can see using the proxy using the proxy using the proxy and you can see we get 200 200 200. 
Um, we can also see the content of the response just to make sure we get something that we're actually interested in. So also print the text of the response. And you can see we get the HTML code, we get um, all these links and products and everything from the website. So this works and it works with a proxy connection. So we don't connect directly to the website, but we connect via the proxies. Now, one thing that might be problematic, let's say I have more sites to check than I have proxy servers, then I should probably have an, a mechanism for um, for starting all over again, because it's rotating, it means that it has to start with zero again. And a simple way to do that is to just um, take the modulo operation or apply the modulo operator. So if we have, for example, five proxies, we would say something like modulo, uh, actually, not here, it would be counter plus equals one and then counter modulo and then the length of the proxy list. So length of proxies. In this case, it would not change the behavior because we have way more proxies than we have sites. But if I have only two proxies, it would jump between one and two all the time. Um, so this is the actual rotation then. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.